Take your Bible, kiss it, say thank you, Jesus, speaking to me tonight, making your word come alive. The word was God breathed, holy men spoke, moved upon by the Holy Spirit. Quibus is anointed to teach, I'm anointed to hear, and I'm a fruit growing Christian. I'm not by the wayside, I'm not on the rocks, you know which rocks, okay, I'm not amongst the thorns, I'm not 30 or 60, but a hundredfold Christian. If I think of God, never mind almighty God, just a minute, just think of God, think of Greek gods, think of gods throughout the ages, do you think a God would be somebody that would be sick? lost control, (laughs) problems. I mean, and yet Moses said, O Lord, who is amongst, who, O Lord, who is like you among the gods? Not among the lords. O Lord, who is like you among the gods? Beautiful in holiness, fear. In other words, Moses acknowledged that through the ages people had gods. And gods is something that you look up to that's supposed to be in control, that's supposed to do stuff if you ask him, that's supposed to not be under your control but have you under control. And whatever I go to with this God, I expect to receive. I mean, with Elijah and the Baal priest on Mount Carmel, I mean, those guys expected to get something, otherwise they would not have been cutting themselves up with swords and stuff like that. And yet by the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah said, The God that answers by fire, let him be God. In other words, there is a God that must prove himself above all other gods. So I think if we think God, we think of something control, no problems, and stuff like that. And I just want to say tonight, when I thought of the word God sitting here tonight, or standing here, or whenever, walking to the pulpit, or whatever, uh, Jesus only called God, God once. And that's in John chapter 4, when he stood with the woman at the well, and he said to her, you know, and see, Jesus said to her, give me a drink. And she said, you have nothing to draw water with. And Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God, and who it is that was speaking to you, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Remember? Remember? And then Jesus started, and she started, Sir, I perceive that. I, and you know, and Jesus said to her, Go call your husband. She said, I have none. She said, You spoke rightly. You had five, and the one that you stay with now is not your own. Yeah. Hmm? And then she said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Okay, now listen, I perceive that you are a prophet. Yeah? Where should we worship? Yeah. On this mountain? Because we Samaritans believe we should believe, uh, worship on this mount. Or in Jerusalem, because you Jews say we must go to. And Jesus said, woman, the time come and now is. You know, and he started talking about a total different subject that we, in which he was on. And he said to her, God. Okay. Try. Right. That's all right. We find one. God is spirit. Okay? And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then Jesus switches from God. He says, because the Father. Okay? So immediately Jesus says, because the Father hmm, is looking for people that will worship him in spirit and in truth and right throughout the book of John especially whenever Jesus did a miracle he said it's not me that's doing the miracles it's the father that's living in me the works that I do are not my works but the works of the father that sent me when I speak it's not my words it's the words of the father that sent me then he says when I speak it's not my words it's the father in me that speaketh and the works I do it's not my works it's the father in me that's doing the works and then constantly jesus would say the father and i are one 
Okay? The Father and I. Okay? Are one. All right? So Jesus started calling God only once. He said, God is spirit. And then he started calling God Father. And right throughout his lifestyle, he said, the Father. The Father showeth the Son all that the Son must do. So he talks about the Father and the Son. Hmm? So if it's a Father, there must be a Son. Because the Son can do nothing, again, repeatedly. The Son can do nothing except he see the Father doeth it. Because whatever the Father doeth, so doeth the Son. The Son has not power to judge, but the Father judges. But the Father has given the Son the power to judge. Therefore, the Son judgeth according to all that the Father saith. So the Father and I are one. So Jesus says, but the Father is spirit. So there was the time when the Spirit of the Lord hovered upon the face of the waters. And the, this earth was empty, without form. There was nothing really looking like anything. And God said out of the nothingness, God spoke and said, let there be light. Now we know in the beginning was the Word. right? John, John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word itself was God. And everything that was made was made by the Word. Back to Genesis. In the beginning God said, let there be and there was. So this Word came out of nothingness. No, it didn't come out of nothingness. It came out of the Spirit that hovered upon the face of the waters. So the same Spirit came upon Mary. You know, Luke chapter 1, as from verse 35, he says, The Spirit of the Lord, the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. The Spirit of the Lord shall come upon you. And the holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called Son of God. In other words, who is the Father? The Spirit. Who came upon Mary? Thank you. It's difficult to understand. But the Bible says, The Spirit shall come upon you, and the holy thing that shall be born of you shall be called Son of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit impregnated Mary. Hmm? How did she got impregnated? Okay, the angel came and said, you know, this shall happen, you shall bear a son. And she said, how can it happen? I've never known a man. And then he said, the Spirit of the Lord. And then she said, let it be to me according to the word. Okay, so here comes that word out of the spirit realm, born forth along by angels. Spirit of the Lord came upon Mary. The word is now on the inside of her, making her pregnant. And she's carrying the creative word of Almighty God along in her. Everything that created everything is now inside of her in the form of a baby growing inside her womb. So the Almighty God created creator of heaven and earth that is spirit no man has ever seen god unto the king eternal immortal invisible the only wise god be glory so god is invisible yet god wants to make himself known Okay, so here comes Mary. She's carrying the seed of the word on the inside of her, carrying all of creative's power and might on the inside of her. So John chapter 1 verse 14, And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glorious of the only begotten of the Father. So God, who cannot be seen, is now in word form by the Spirit, impregnating a woman, this baby is now born, called the Word is now flesh, and you sh he shall be called the Son of the Most High, or the Son of God. But you shall call his name Jesus. Hmm? Hmm? So you can call him Jesus. Hmm? You can call him Jesus. Okay? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5 and 6. For unto us a child is born. A child is born. A son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called. He shall be called. Wonderful. 
Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And you can go on. Fountain of living water, bread of life, bright morning star. So he didn't stop when he said he shall be called. He's trying to say, this is what you can call him. But what actually happened is when the Spirit, the thing, the holy thing that shall be born of you shall be. Just say it because if the revelation hits you, you're not going to sit like a pimple on a pole. Okay? So the holy thing that shall be born shall not be Jesus, shall not be wonderful, shall not be counselor. Shall, the holy thing that shall be born shall be called the Son. But you can call him Jesus. You can call him wonderful. You can call him counselor. You can call him Mary. You can call him anything. Okay, so the word on the inside of Mary, by the Holy Spirit that came upon her, gave birth to God in the flesh. Now God is in the flesh walking around, and whatever He does, He says, uh, it's not me. In other words, it's not this what you see here. It's what's in me. And what came upon me. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and all that. But it's the Father in me. But I and the Father are one. They struggle to understand. Jesus starts telling them. He says, if you struggle to understand this stuff, what will happen if I return to where I was in the Father before I came to this earth? Hey, oh well, Emma, listen. If you struggle to believe this, what I'm now busy with, if you struggle to take this, what are you going to do when I return to the bosom of the Father? What is the Father? Okay, so where is He? So Jesus came out of into a flesh body. So what are you going to do if I return to where I was before I came? Okay, so I can, if you struggle with this. Well, I just want to say what I say to our people. Uh, we only have about an hour. So we will not be able to cover the whole topic of God. <laughs> But I'll try my best to do a portion. But we do have a book that we sell in our bookshops. You can get it at Executive Books. You can get CNA, PNA. You can get all over. It's called Bible. It's got more on the story. <laughs> so, so if I just touch on a portion tonight, you can get the whole thing. Are you ready? So, now Jesus is now on the earth. God in flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. Listen, great is this mystery of godliness. God, who is invisible, was made manifest in the flesh. The word, maybe you should just write a few words down. The word. That became flesh, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the Spirit, okay? The Word again. God was now made manifest in flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, okay? Was seen of angels. Mm -hmm. Seen of angels. Okay. Seen of angels. Okay? On and on. But just three sentences. Taken up into glory. What will happen if I go back to where I was before I came? Don't miss this. If you struggle with the stuff I'm talking about, what's going to happen if you see me going back to the Father from whence? I originally came. Okay. Seen of angels. 
Child is born, son is given, government upon shoulders. I and the father are one. The son can do nothing except he sees the father do it. So let's just go start going straight into the stuff. In Psalm chapter 2, and Paul quotes it there in Acts, he says, It is written in the second psalm of him. You are my son. This day have I begotten you. From the word got, begot, past tense, beget, but present, continuous, begotten. Okay, just listen. In James chapter 1, it says, out of his own will, he beget us. So if he says to the son, you are my son. This day have I begotten you. And he says of you, out of his own will, he beget us unto himself. Then it means something happened to you. Hebrews chapter 2 talks about the captain of our salvation had to be made perfect through sufferings. Man, this is cool. The captain of our salvation. I'm just writing key words here because this is going to freak you out. Out of, you see, he says, uh, the captain of our salvation had to be made perfect through sufferings. Hmm? He says, because this was his purpose, he wanted to bring many sons into glory. For this reason, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So what was his purpose in suffering? To bring many sons into glory. For this reason, he is not ashamed to call us brethren. The same story in Romans chapter 8. The same story in Galatians chapter 4. As long as the heir is, as the heir is a child, he differs nothing from a slave. But as under tutors and governors till the time appointed the father. But when the fullness of time came. God sent forth his son, born of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those that were under the law, that we could receive the adoption or the placing of sons. And now that we are sons or children, God has placed the spirit of his son in our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer slaves, but sons. And if sons, then heirs. And if heirs, then joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He didn't put you one little bit lower than Jesus Christ. You are a joint heir. God didn't leave anything away from you. He shared His very throne with you when He raised up Christ, Romans 6, when He raised up Christ, Ephesians 2, when He raised up Christ, Colossians 3, when He raised up Christ, you were risen together with Him, seated together with Him in heavenly places. You are not minor to the Christ. You are very equal. He made you a joint heir, a son of God. Okay? Now listen, we need to not, this is not supposed to be good theology. Somewhere it needs to become a reality because there's a world out there that need people to start manifesting sonship, to start walking in their divine calling. Those whom He have called, He has all chosen, He also called. Those whom He have called, He also justified. Those whom He justified, He also glorified to be conformed to the image of His dear Son. Romans 8 verse 29, 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. We all with open face behold now in a glass or in a mirror or in the word of God oh and we can look at thy very face of Jesus Christ and we are changed from the glory of the old to the glory of the new into the very image of the Son of God. Okay. What am I trying to say Kubis? Okay. If he this is my son and my begotten, and he begat you. Then how did it all happen? First Peter chapter 1, verse 23 says, You have been born again. Regenerated. You were begotten. Depends on what translation you have in front of you. By the ever... No, by, not by corruptible things. Silver and gold. But by the in 
incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. You were born from above, born again, begotten unto God as the Son, by the ever-living seed. He calls it seed there in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Seed. The seed was planted into Mary. It is the seed that's going to be called the Son of the Most High God. The seed was planted in you. And every time the Word goes forth, every time the Spirit moves, the seed is watered and Christ is growing on the inside of you. Ephesians 2 verse 13, 12, 13 and 14. His intention was the perfecting of the saints. Till we all come to the unity of the faith. The measure of the stature of the fullness of the Christ amplifies this. Nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. This was the intention of Christ when? When he ascended. Verse 8. When he ascended. What is it that he first descended? And when he ascended. He gave gifts unto man. Apostolic, prophetic, pastors, evangelists, pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints. Till we all come. Hmm? When he ascended. So when you see me go. To where I was before. If you struggle with what I'm teaching you about, I and the Father are one. If you struggle to understand the works I do or the works of the Father. If you struggle to understand the words that I speak are the words of the Father. If you struggle, what's going to happen if I go to where I came from? John, listen, this is going to freak people out. What is going to happen? Everybody say, I can hear tonight. I will hear hear. with every ear, ear. spiritual, my mind, my my brain. I will receive and bear fruit. Okay, whatever I do is not me. It's the Father in me. Whatever I speak is not me. It's the Father in me. If you struggle, what's going to happen when I go back to where I was? So when he ascended, he gave gifts. His intention with this gift was not to show, well, I'm Apostle F.G. Pinky D. Wobbly Smith. And if I am in the house, my authority rules, and you give to me, you bless me, you bow to me. No, his intention was that we all be one, Look the same, do the same, be the same. His intention was not superiority in the church. His intention was uniformity in the church. So we all come to the stature of the fullness of the Christ. When the apostle come in the house, people bow. What lot of junk. They didn't even do it to Jesus. Whenever anybody bowed to Jesus, Jesus immediately said, stand up. We're not supposed to force down authority on people. We're supposed to rule the universe and bring everybody up so that we can together take charge of our universe. We're supposed to rule the storms and the winds and the money and the gold and sickness and disease and demons and devils, not people. Now, let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 1. We now did a, a few verses, verse 10, 11, 12. We did verse 23. Now look at verse 17 and 18. If you call on Him as Father... I thought we heard something about that. If you call on him as father, you must know, amplify it. You must recognize that you have been redeemed from the useless, fruitless way of living that you have inherited from your forefathers by the precious 
not blood, the precious blood of Jesus. Like that of a sacrificial lamb who offered him unto God. In other words, the blood of Jesus took me out of all my forefather's stuff. Colossians 1 verse 12. He have delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. No, from the domain of darkness. Dominion of darkness. Not even kingdom. Dominion of darkness. And translated us to the kingdom of His dear Son. 1 Peter 2 mentions it a little bit different. He says, He has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. That we who are not a people are now not people. We who have not received mercy have now obtained mercy. And you are called what? A chosen generation. A holy nation. A royal priesthood. Hmm? Royal priesthood. Royal kingdom. Kingdom. Kingdom of priesthood. Kings and priests. Okay? Revelation 1, 5 and 5, 9. He has washed us in His blood and made us to be kings and priests unto our God and Father. Father, so we are kings and priests unto God by the blood of Jesus.